Shiloh Dynasty disappeared from social media seven years ago, and still to this day, nobody really knows why. Shiloh's rampant success and cult fan base comes from her posting short clips of her singing on Vine, Instagram, and Twitter. To be exact, she has released just 10 minutes and 8 seconds worth of music, all of which was recorded acoustic in front of an iPhone. She was able to generate millions of record sales, billions of streams, and even redefine an entire genre. To this day, she still has 7 million monthly listeners, all by releasing just 10 minutes of material. But nobody has seen or heard from her in over 7 years. Today, we are going to find out why. On December 3rd, 2014, Shiloh Dynasty uploaded her very first video on Vine, revealing only half her face, singing an acoustic song in a dark room. It's so the things you do. This six second clip accumulated 1.1 million loops, or views, on her first ever upload. From there, Shiloh would continue posting snippets of original songs and covers to the platform, purposefully never making eye contact with the camera, ensuring her identity was kept a mystery. Over the course of five months, between December 3rd, 2014 and April 19th, 2015, Shiloh would post 13 times on Vine before fully making the transition to Instagram in 2015. Although her persona was very much hidden on social media, it wouldn't take long for Shiloh's music to catch the attention of some of the most established figures in the music industry, 100 times platinum Timbaland being one of them, sharing a clip of Shiloh singing on his Instagram and Twitter page in July of 2015. Like many artists on the rise in this era, Shiloh did post on SoundCloud too, however, only two full-length original songs would ever see the light of day, Downtown and Nicole's Garden. Both were uploaded in 2014, prior to her emergence on Vine. It was her covers of hit songs like Drake's One Dance and John Legend's Save Room, along with original snippets on Instagram that would not only build her a cult fanbase, but turn her into a go-to source for producers around the world to sample, especially in the lo-fi genre. Swell was one of the first producers to spearhead this new wave of Shiloh-infused beats back in 2016, turning her second ever Vine into a viral hit called I'm Sorry, amassing 33 million views on the Anime Vibe YouTube channel. Unfortunately, with producers now tapping into the pot of gold that was Shiloh's Instagram page and her fame hitting new heights, her social media posts became more sporadic. It was clear from the get-go that Shiloh was an enigma, but this change in activity was a worrying sign for what was to come. I'm not a look, I'm a feeling. This post from Shiloh spoke volumes about her desire to stay out of the spotlight. Little did fans know, September of 2016 would be the last time they ever heard from Shiloh. A rare picture of herself sitting in front of a mirror with a caption, come here, being Shiloh's last ever post. With months passing by and no new music, news, or updates, people began to worry about Shiloh's well-being. Theories of Shiloh passing away began spreading rampantly in her comment sections, and fans were left with nothing but questions. Nearly a year after Shiloh had vanished from the internet, XXXTentacion would go on Snapchat to preview songs off his upcoming album, Seventeen, and fans were very surprised at what they heard. Blowing up on SoundCloud with songs like Look At Me and Take A Step Back, X had made a name for himself screaming over loud and distorted 808s, a distinct sound that many fans were looking forward to hearing across his debut studio album. However, after clicking on his Snapchat story on August 5th of 2017 and taking a few seconds to digest the music he was playing off his MacBook, it was clear he was heading in a very different direction with this project, one that included Shiloh Dynasty. Out of the 11 song tracklist featuring nothing but emotional cuts from the SoundCloud legend, Shiloh's voice can be heard on three, Jocelyn Flores, Everyone Dies in Their Nightmares, and Carry On, all sampling old songs from her Instagram page. Jocelyn Flores would go on to be the most streamed song on the album, with over 1.8 billion streams on Spotify, and help the project go two times platinum. The single Jocelyn Flores is almost certified diamond. There was undoubtedly a special connection between X and Shiloh musically, but many fans wondered if they ever met in person or had any sort of relationship. Luckily, XXXTentacion's producer and friend John Cunningham would clarify this years later during a Reddit AMA stating the following, I was with Ja and Shiloh while they made Everybody Dies in Their Nightmares and Carry On in LA back in August. Shiloh's an amazing person, so fans knew for sure that she was alive. This also raised the theory that Shiloh possibly re-recorded her part in the studio with X, but that's unconfirmed. One thing that may have confirmed though regarding Shiloh is her gender. Up to this point in time, no one knew for sure if Shiloh was a boy or a girl, yet when X was asked on Instagram Live what he mostly likes about Shiloh, he referred to Shiloh as she. What do you mostly like about Shiloh? Um, 
I honestly respect Shala as an artist because her, her words are just pure emotion and she just writes about emo emotion. Since they had supposedly met in the studio, it's safe to say X knew better than anyone if Shiloh was a boy or a girl. But their collaboration ramped Shiloh up to an even higher level of fame, with even more people trying to solve the Shiloh Dynasty mystery. One of the first clues to help solve this mystery was found in the writing credits of X's album 17. Among the songs that include Shiloh Dynasty samples, it lists Jase Onfroy, which is X's real name, and a person by the name of Sierra Nicole Sims. To many people's surprise, Shiloh was not her real name, Sierra was. For such a reclusive individual, using a stage name made sense. Yet even with her real name being spread across Reddit and various comment sections, the mystery continued. Shiloh was careful not to leave any traces of her personal life behind online, and even cut ties with the few individuals that knew her back in school, such as Devin Johnson. Last time I've heard from Shiloh was 2016, and after that, I thought Shiloh had Died. Since nothing was really found under her real name, theories started to spread that she was now posting under the alias Graffiti Egypt. The two share similar features, and Shiloh did follow the account on Instagram, however it was debunked shortly after. Another clue that was uncovered around the time was fans discovering her legal business, Shiloh Dynasty LLC. This became a way for fans to know that she was alive and still doing some sort of music business because LLCs need to be renewed every year in America. The LLC is still active today. Sadly, in 2018, the world got shocked with the tragic news that XXX Tentacion passed away. Fans were wondering if Shiloh knew, if she was aware, but no statement from her was made. However, Shiloh was sampled again on the first XXX Tentacion posthumous album, Skins, and would continue being sampled by other big names such as Juice World and Young Thug, only adding to her fame. Yet, as 2019 rolled around, the singer was still silent, until her alleged manager broke the silence for her, telling Genius, Shiloh is an intensely private person, and that is all I have to say on the matter. For such a private individual, her music was now being heard by more people than ever. Along with X and Juice collaborations, Shiloh gained 7.4 million monthly listeners on her Spotify page, one that quickly became a stomping ground for lo-fi producers looking to use her name for clout and streams. By tagging Shiloh as a featured artist and sampling her work, producers are able to get their songs to appear on the verified Shiloh page a literal streaming cheat code. If you compare any of the songs these producers have made with a Shiloh sample to their songs that don't have a Shiloh sample, the numbers aren't even close. That's not to say that sampling is a bad thing. In fact, it's been a crucial part of music for decades. It really just raises the question, if everyone is sampling her work, who's making the money? This article posted to Billboard in September 2022 highlights a lawsuit over Shiloh Dynasty and Swell's 2016 hit song, I'm Sorry. According to Swell's label, there is an agreement in place between the artist Artist, Swell and Shiloh for the clearance of the sample used in Swell's song, and Shiloh's representation, Create Music Group, falsely claimed the song, collecting revenue since June of 2020. With this information, it's fair to assume Shiloh is working with the music distribution royalty collection company Create in order to get paid for her work. And we'll never really know what's going on behind the scenes, but I just personally doubt that every single person sampling Shiloh and doing official releases with her are also fairly compensating her monetarily. I just don't think Shiloh cares to stop it. Just a few months after this lawsuit took place, something bizarre happened on the Shiloh Dynasty YouTube channel. After six years with no activity, a full-length album titled Taste Like Velvet was uploaded. Fans were confused to say the least, with many believing she was finally back, nine songs long. The album is filled with what sounds like full-length versions of some of her iconic Instagram and Vine clips. However, after reading through the comment section and going through the Shiloh Dynasty subreddit, the truth behind this album starts to become more clear. Shiloh Dynasty allegedly never had a YouTube channel, so the owner of this channel is unknown. And according to the subreddit, the Tastes Like Velvet album was purchased via a group buy on Discord, orchestrated by the die-hard Shiloh fans. One of the mods on the subreddit revealing that, we managed to acquire the tracklist a long time ago and the album cover art as it was previously released by Shiloh on Instagram before she deleted the post. Keep in mind that was in 2016. The group buy allows the community to work together for a common goal and allows us to hear music that was supposed to be lost for six plus years. Around the same time this supposed group buy was taking place, Shiloh's Instagram was deactivated, possibly deleted forever. The demand for Shiloh's music is unprecedented. She released a handful of Instagram videos seven years ago, which totaled around 10 minutes of music material, and that was enough for her to earn a diamond single. 
develop an entire Reddit fanbase trying to discover who she is, then them buying a full-length album of supposed leaked or stolen songs, and an entire genre of lo-fi producers getting thousands, sometimes millions of streams just by sampling her. She never did an interview, never posted anything about her real life, basically never posted a full song, never gave us a backstory, never said why she makes music, never said what her goals and aspirations were, never thanked anyone for support, never even confirmed that she was a real person. She posted 10 minutes of material and disappeared, and the quality that she created in those short 10 minutes have built her a career from the shadows that she seemingly never wanted.